Hello, it's been a while, but tonight I will be reading um, a story from Favourite Folk Tales, sorry, Favourite Fairy Tales Told in Scotland, um, retold by Virginia Haviland, or Haviland, however you say it, but um, I will be reading the second story in the book. And the title of this story is The Wee Bannock. And I'm probably going to butcher this, but a bannock is like a cake of uh, some sort of, um, oh, I'm going to butcher how t describing what this is, but it's, it's some sort of pastry or bread thing, um, but it's called a bannock. Anyway, here we go. Once upon a time in Scotland, an old man and an old woman lived in a wee cottage. They were contented enough, for besides their cottage and their garden, they had two cows, five hens, a cock, a cat, and two kittens. The old man looked after the cows and the hens in the garden. The old woman kept busy spinning. The kittens often jumped at her spindle, and she would say, Shoo, shoo, go away. One day, after breakfast, the old woman thought she would... The old woman thought she would make a bannock for their evening meal. She put her griddle over the fire and baked two fine oatmeal cakes. When they were done, she set them before the fire to harden. As the bannocks were toasting, the good, man's hus good, the good wife's husband came in from the barn. He sat down beside the fire to rest in his great chair. After a while, his eyes spied the bannocks. He took one and snapped it through the middle. Then he began to eat it. When the other bonnock saw this, it up and ran across the kitchen and out the door as fast as it could roll. The old woman started after it with her spindle in one hand and her distaff in the other. But the wee bonnock ran faster than she did, and it escaped over the hill behind the cottage. It ran and it ran and it ran until it came to a big thatched house. Here it went boldly in and over to the fireside. Now it happened that this house belonged to a tailor. He and his two apprentices were sitting cross-legged on a big table, sewing away with all their might. When they saw the wee bannock, bonnet come rolling across the floor, all three got such a fright that they jumped down from their table and hid behind the tailor's good wife, who was carting away by the fire. Up she jumped with her carding, and the tailor up too with his ironing goose. One apprentice grasped the shears, and the other the ironing board. All of them tried to catch the wee bonnock. But the bonnock dodged them all and ran around, round about the fire. One of the lads, thinking to snip it with the shears, fell into the ashes. The bonnock, alas, got out the door, with the tailor throwing the ironing goose at it and the good wife her carding tools. The bonnock ran too quickly for them. However, on and on it rolled until it came to a wee cottage by the road. In here it ran and found a weaver sitting at his loom. The weaver's wife sat beside him, winding a hank of yarn. "'What's that, Tibby?' asked the weaver as the little cat cake rolled past him. "'Oh!' she cried in delight. "'Tis a wee bonnock. Aye, and it's well come. Our porridge was but thin today. "'Grip it, woman, grip it!' called her husband. "'Aye, but that's a clever bannock. Catch it, Willie. Catch it, man!' "'Hoot!' answered Willie. "'Throw your wool at it now!' But it was in vain that the good wife threw her wool at it that the weaver tried to corner it and knock it down with his shuttle. The wee bonnock dodged, and it turned and twisted till at last it flew right out the door again. Over the hill it went, like a bat, like a mad cow. On and on it ran, to another house, and again into the fireplace. This time the wee bonnock found the good wife in her kitchen churning. When she spied the wee bonnock, she cried out, Come now, wee cake! "'Tis bonnock and cream I'll have for my dinner this day.' But the wee bonnock dodged about the churn, and the good wife after it. In such a hurry she was that she all but upset her churn, and before she could got it set right again, the wee bonnock was off and down the hill to the mill, and in it ran. The miller was sifting meal, but he looked up at the wee bonnock and as it rolled across the floor. "'Aye, tis a sign of plenty, just when bonnocks are running about and nobody to look after them.' But I like bannock and cheese. Come your way hither now, and I'll give you a night's quarters, wee bannock. But the little bannock was not going to trust itself to the miller and his cheese. So it turned fast and ran right out again. The miller was that busy that he did not chase it either. 
the wee bonnet toddled away and on and on till it came to the smithy, and in it popped and right up to the anvil. The smith was at work making horse nails when the wee bonnet entered. I, I do like a glass of good ale and a well toasted bonnet, he cried. Come your way by here. But the wee bonnet was afraid when it heard about the ale. It turned and was off as hard as it could go, and the smith after it with his hammer. When the smith saw that he could not catch up to it, he flung his heavy hammer after it to knock it down. But luckily for the wee bonnet, he missed, and the bonnet was now out of sight. On and on ran the bonnet till it came to a farmhouse with a great stack of peats drying for the fire. Into the house it ran and up to the fireside. Here the good man was working with flax, separating the lint from the stalks with a cloving stick. His good wife was combing that he had already, what he had already separated. Oh, Janet, cried the good man, here's a wee bonnet come in. It looks that good. I'll have a half of it. Well, John, I'll have the other half, cried the good wife. Hit it over the back with your stick, or it will be out at the door again, she said. But the bonnet was clever and played catch me if you can. Hoot toot, cried Janet when she saw her husband miss it, and she threw her tool at it too. But it was far too clever to be hit. This time the wee bonnet ran along the brook till it came to a wee cottage standing in the heather. Here the good wife was stirring the soup. Her good man was braiding straw ropes for tying the cows. Oh, Jock, come here! Come, cried the good wife. You are forever crying for a wee bonnet for the supper. Here is one come right through the, our door. Quick, and I'll help you grip it. Aye, mother, but where is it? See there, man. There, under the chair, cried his wife. Run over to that side. I'll keep to this. But the bonnet ran behind Jock's chair, and Jock, in his haste, tripped and fell. The wee clever bonnet jumped over him and flew out the door. Through the bushes of gorse it ran, and over the hill, and down to a shepherd's cottage. And it rolled and snug to the fireplace. The folks here were just sitting down to their porridge, and the good wife was scraping out the pot for all the wee bairns at the table. Well now, she exclaimed with her spoon in the air, here's a wee bonnet come in to warm itself at our fireside. Shut the door, cried her husband, and we'll try to get a grip on it. It would come in handy after our porridge. When the bonnet heard that, it did not wait for the door to be closed. It whirled away and ran off as fast as it could, with the shepherd and his good wife and their wee bairns after it. The shepherd threw his bonnet after the bonnet, but it escaped and rolled on to another house. Here the folk were just going to bed. The goodman had just stepped out of his breeks, and the good wife was raking the fire. "'What's that?' asked he. "'Oh, it's a wee bonnet,' she said. "'Grip it!' I could have the half of it, said he. Catch it then, answered his wife, and I'll have a bit too. Quick, quick, cast your breeks at it, and it will be away. The good man threw his breeks out on the little bonnet and nearly smothered it, but it wiggled out and bravely and ran into the dark of evening. The good man went on and on, chasing the wee bonnet far across the moor, but then he lost it. As for the poor wee bonnet, it thought it had better creep under a gorse bush and lie there till morning. But it was so dark that it could not see a fox's hole that was there. Down it fell into the, into it, and the fox very glad to see it, just, for he had got no food for two days. Oh, welcome, welcome, said the fox, and he snapped it through the middle, and that was the end of the wee bonnet. So, this is quite an interesting story. It has a, an element of, it makes you think of um, the gingerbread man, almost. Um, but this is a much longer story than that, I feel like. But, you know, there's a fox in this story, too. Which makes me wonder if this is the origin uh, story of where we have the gingerbread man. I don't know. But this is quite interesting. Hope you enjoyed.